Have you ever heard the expression having an albatross around your neck or thank God you got rid of that albatross? An albatross is a burden you have to carry, often because of something you said or did, either to yourself or to someone else. And the expression comes from a famous epic poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge called The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Briefly, the poem begins with three guys on their way to a wedding, and one of them is singled out by the ancient mariner, who is described as having a long gray beard and a glittering eye. He's an arresting figure. The other two go off to the wedding, but the one who's left behind asks, why me? Why have I been singled out for this encounter with what he calls a gray bearded loon? But by the end of the poem, when the wedding guest has heard the ancient mariner's entire tale of wrongdoing, atonement, and redemption, he realizes this wasn't random at all. He needed to hear this story at this time in his life, and he will be forever changed as a result of it. Interestingly, this is the reaction of many people who've read the poem, myself included, and found it speaking directly to them in a deep and personal way. Early on, the ancient mariner reports that on the first leg of their voyage from England, their ship is blown off course all the way down to the South Pole and they find themselves adrift amidst unnavigable icebergs. This is a land that is completely devoid of life. And then suddenly out of nowhere, an albatross appears. By the way, look up images of albatrosses on the internet. They are the most beautiful, pristine, all white birds. Melville called them prodigies of plumage. And they have wingspans of up to 12 feet. I mean, they're truly epic, otherworldly animals. And this albatross guides the ship to safety. We then come out of the story and the wedding guest looks at the ancient mariner and is aghast at the expression on the mariner's face. He says, why lookest thou so? And in one of the starkest confessions in all of English literature, the ancient mariner says, with my crossbow, I shot the albatross. No motive is offered, no excuse, which is what makes it kind of a universal representative of all of the stupid, terrible things that human beings do to each other and to ourselves. Why? Simply because we can. It goes to the heart of human evil. And as a punishment, the ancient mariner is forced to carry this dead bird around his neck. And that's how the expression albatross around your neck came into being. Now, everyone that I have ever known has an albatross around their necks. Most people are unaware of it, but that doesn't mean you don't have it. And today, what I wanna do is talk about how I discovered my personal albatross and how I've begun to free myself from it, not because my story is particularly unique or important, but because I think it might help you release yourself from your albatross. So sometime around 2018, 2019, I began, to expand, I began to experience a depression, the likes of which I had never known in my entire life. I never knew what depression really was until that year. And there was no obvious cause. In retrospect, I honestly think it was just time for me to atone for the albatross I had killed over five decades earlier. To understand that, let me give you some background. My family of origin was truly more fucked up than most people's are. Everybody's family's fucked up in various ways, but mine was honestly more so. There were numerous sexual boundary crossings. There were overt verbalized threats of suicide. And worst of all, there, were, there was just a level of emotional savagery that really no kid, for that matter, no adult should really be exposed to. And in the middle of this, I was the youngest, but I was also the strongest and the most stable member of the family. And both parents looked to me to be solid and supportive and not to need anything from them. 
when things really began to fall apart, which is when I was around nine or 10 years old, in order to try to be a good kid and not give them any trouble, I took all of my feelings, everything that I was experiencing, and I just buried it. What I was feeling at the time was grief. I mean, deep, deep grief and sadness at the way family members were tearing each other apart. But underneath the grief, there was something else, which I frankly would describe as just feelings of horror, truly horror, like you feel in, a, in The Exorcist or a horror movie, only it wasn't a movie. I was seeing things that I was just not equipped to explain, like the demonic possession in The Exorcist. And then underneath the horror was a desperate kind of loneliness. In my family, there was an oath of silence. You just never talked to anyone outside the family about what was going on inside the family. And to this day, there are friends who don't know the extent of what was going on with me at the time. Anyway, I took all of these feelings, grief, horror, and loneliness, and I pushed them into my shadow. And then I did the worst thing. I closed the door on him. And he has been locked in that room for over five decades. I had no idea what the shadow was at the time, and I'm not beating myself up for this, but I literally remember saying to myself, I have to be strong for them. These feelings are going to weaken me. I'm sorry, but you're on your own. And I shut down my heart. At first, it was a struggle to keep it all down. I actually developed a swallowing disorder because I was swallowing so many feelings, but but I am nothing if not persistent. And after a while, it worked. I stopped feeling anything. I'm a really good actor, so I could mimic empathy. But honestly, trust me, I felt nothing. I was as cold as a stone. That was how I shot the albatross. Again, I'm not beating myself up for this. I was just trying to survive as a kid. But from that point forward, my shadow hung around my neck like dead weight. Thankfully, the shadow is persistent. It never stops trying to reach you. And eventually, it found a way to break down that door flooding me with all of the feelings that it had been stuck with forever. In my case, it started with sort of mild depressive episodes that were brief and, you know, not particularly deep. But over the years, over decades, it got deeper and each episode lasted longer. And quarantine finally pushed me over the edge. I was cut off from all of my friends, from extended family, places to go. I fell into a pit so deep, I had never experienced anything like that in my life. I literally felt the weight of something pulling me down. And that was the beginning of my redemption. Everyone's redemption is gonna look different, but it will always involve some sort of atonement. In my case, whenever I felt profoundly alone and depressed or longing for someone to take care of me, I had to face my shadow and understand that he'd been feeling all of those feelings my entire life. And he was longing for me to take care of him. Gradually over time with a lot of experimentation, I developed different ways of doing this. Sometimes I just gazed into his eyes I have to say they were the most empty, hungry, lonely eyes I've ever seen. I gazed into his eyes and I swore I would never leave him again, that I would be with him even on our deathbed together. Sometimes we cried together. Sometimes I held him in my arms. Sometimes he held me in his arms. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this worked, you know, every time, like a magical recovery. 
But gradually, over time, the depression lifted. I could feel it, and I could feel that it was the result of the work that I was doing. The overwhelming intensity of the longing and the loneliness dissipated. You know, to put it simply, I could breathe again. Honestly, I'm not a religious person, but it felt something like the grace of God. My definition of grace is love you didn't earn from a source you didn't know existed. And that's what I began to feel. Coleridge in the poem puts it so beautifully, the ancient mariner in his moment of grace says, that self same moment I could pray and from my neck so free, the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea. My hope for all of you is that you can accept responsibility for whatever you've done to your shadow and feel the profound freedom and grace that comes with atonement. Thank you for listening. See you again next time.